Hi, happy September 1st. This is going to be my August planner update where I show a flip through of all of my planners and journals from the month of August. So let's just get started because I have a lot to cover. First up, I am going to talk about this new addition to my lineup. Um, I know a number of you have seen this and you have been waiting for me to talk about it. This is what I'm calling my, my ADHD planner. And I don't think I will talk about it apart from this video just because I am very new to this and I am still personally trying to deal with it myself. I know that ADHD is different for everyone and I just don't think I'm... I, I have any authority to talk about it. So anyways, um, this has been really, really, really helping me with staying productive and focused on what I have to do. It is a very, very simple layout. So all I do is I turn this notebook landscape wise and I'm just using my mild liner highlighter in the gray color, the chisel tip, or sorry, this is a bullet tip. And I just freehand draw a margin on the left column, this is where I very simply write down the date. And then on the right column, this is where I write down my to-do list. And essentially how this works is every time I sit down to get some work done, I write down everything that I want to do in the exact order that I want to do it in. And then I check things off as I finish them. And then whenever I get up, I leave my desk to take a break. Maybe it's like grabbing lunch or something. I once again use my mild liner and I just section it off. And then the next time I go back to my computer ready to work for the next few hours, I again make a to-do list just for that work block. This really helps me because since I have just a lot of things to do, I get very overwhelmed and distracted. So I might be working on one thing and then in the back of my head, I'm panicking because I have like 20 other things to do and what ends up happening is I do a little bit of everything but I get nothing done and I'm also extremely anxious because I'm again like working on a billion other things. So in short, this just helps me really keep focus on what I have to work on in the present instead of worrying about what I have to do later in the day. And you might be wondering like how does this differ from the to-do list that I make in my Hobonichi cousin every morning. Like, is this not, you know, repetitive? It actually works together very beautifully, at least for me. So in my Hobonichi cousin, I make this to-do list in the morning. I just run through my head exactly what I need to do today. And none of this is in chronological order. It is just whatever pops into my head first. So again, this is like a jumbled version of everything that I have to do for the day. And then when I go to actually work, um, I refer to this list and I kind of extract things into the order of importance and write it down chronologically. Another difference is um, you might notice that like at the very beginning of all of my work blocks, uh, yeah, see, emails, 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 literally like almost at the beginning of every work block, I write down emails and a social media run through. This is where I basically just go through my email inbox and quickly check social media, respond to stuff, um, just like 15 to 20 minutes. This is something that I do periodically throughout the day. I am not gonna write check emails like five times over here. In fact, I don't think I even write it in here anymore. So. Essentially, this is extremely nitty-gritty and to some people it might seem just a bit obsessive and Like what is the point of writing down something that you know, you're gonna have to do anyways But for me, it helps tremendously with my anxiety and focus just writing down every step that I have to do I do add little bits of stickers and washi tapes and little notes on the side um but I do keep it very functional and minimal because at its core, it is a tool for me to be productive. And again, um, everyone experiences ADHD differently. 
and I'm not sure if this will help anyone. I get actually a lot of comments from people saying how um, I could never do the kind of planning that you do because I have ADHD. And in my head, I'm like, I have ADHD too. So it's just very different for everyone. And I do hope that if you experience something similar in terms of focus, um, this system might be a worthwhile thing to try. Maybe you have to tweak it for yourself. So yeah, um, I think this is all I will say about this. I probably won't flip through this in future videos, at least every month, because it is literally just a continuous to-do list and it's not very interesting to look at. I might add a little vinyl on the front though. So next up, I'm going to talk about my reading journal, which I am so happy because I started reading a lot more in August. That is very relative though, because I know there are people out there who are reading like three books a week and aiming for like 200 books a year. I literally only read like 10 to 20 minutes a day. So by reading a lot, that is relative to previous months for myself. But yeah, anyways, I am very happy to report that on August 25th, I finally finished Walkable City. I started reading this book in June, so it's been about two and a half months. Kind of ridiculous, but um, yeah. These are all of my notes. I took quite a bit of notes. And I did give it three stars because uh, it was it was interesting, but I think it was due to the excitement of reading my first book on urban planning. I feel like if I have read other better urban planning books, um, I wouldn't have enjoyed this one as much. But still a lot of valuable information. Um, and I actually couldn't fit all of my notes in here, so I had to like tag it in over here. This page is an entire mess. Okay, I also finished rereading Thinking with Type on August 17th. This was a pretty quick read because the book had mostly graphics, um, but I just wanted to revisit this book. I already read this book like two years ago and um, I just wanted a refresher. And this one was really fun because I took some notes with different colored pens and they're more like artistic notes. My rating though of three stars remains the same as two years ago. And then because I had so much space left, I took some notes on some articles that I read. And then again, I tagged on some extra notes from Walkable City. And then I started a new book called Tom Lake. And I think it's a relatively popular book, not too sure. But um, I had a lot of people commenting that they have read it as well. So I am about 65% through. And so far, I'm really enjoying it. It is a very cozy book. And I think if you're just looking for something that feels good um, and to kind of round off summer, I think this is this would be a good book for you as well. There's that. And then I also started reading She Has Her Mother's Laugh, which is a nonfiction book about basically genetics and like inheriting traits really really enjoying this book so far and i just finished part one this morning so those were my thoughts about it and i think that's it for my reading journal so yeah um very happy to reading very happy to be reading more again i hope that i can finish books at a faster pace <laughs> so there's that I have my pocket bullet journal, which unfortunately I did not finish in the month of August as I hoped, but literally just a few pages left. So definitely September. Okay, so this was my August monthly, which I didn't update too much as you can see, but I think I will try to continue this again for September. I do really like this format. These are all of the June washi swatches, which I think I showed in my previous update already. So there's that. And then this is a vertical spread of my, like the transition week from Ju July to August. Um, this was a very hectic week because I was preparing for the birthday sale event and it was the week before I flew to New York. And then in between, I have some personal notes. So I'm just gonna flip over that. 
This was after I came back from New York and I had a lot to catch up on. But I did spend a lot of time doodling these flowers, so I really like this. Okay, and then this was me experimenting with a quote-unquote Hobonichi Weeks style layout. And over here, I wrote down all of my timed events. Um, and then over here, I wrote some to-do list of the main focus of the day. And then here, I just did a big brain dump throughout the week. And then lastly, this is a little sketch of my 2025 planner plans. This is what I plan on getting from the Hobonichi launch. Um, and then these are my other planners, which I already have all of these, so none of them I actually need to purchase. I will definitely talk about my 2025 planner system when everything comes in and I can show everything more tangibly. So yeah, that is all for my pocket bullet journal. And fingers crossed, I can finish this in the month of September. Cool. Last but not least, I have my Hobonichi cousin. Oh my gosh, brain fart. This is my fitness tracker. Um, a few more to fill out, so I haven't um, finished this chart. So I have to say, after I don't know how many years of keeping my step count goal of at least 10k steps, I broke it in the week of New York. And it absolutely pained me. Oh my gosh. I think it is so ironic because New York is such a walkable city and I think most people when they go to New York, their step count actually increases. But for me, it actually decreased to like, I think it was 3,000 to 5,000 steps. But it was because I was basically just standing at my vendor stall for 8 to 12 hours for those few days. So that is why like the only steps that I got was like to get food and unfortunately my streak has been broken, but that is okay. We move on. Uh, okay. Anyways, this is my August monthly spread. I will say I have finished the 2025 monthly kit formats and because I made improvements to that format, I look at my 2024 format in disgust. Okay, that is a little bit dramatic, but hopefully you can understand what I mean. Like, because I made little tweaks, I can just see all of the quote-unquote problems that aren't actually problems in the 2024 kit. So anyways, um, I wasn't too inspired to continue planning in the monthlies, but I think this is this is okay. Let's look at the weekly section. I was very happy because I got to use the Coffee Monster Robert Oster ink. It is this lovely brown and just looking at this makes me so happy. I think I showed part of this in the July planner update, so I won't talk too much about it. And then this was my week in New York, so I used the Concrete Jungle 2.0 washi tape, which is the nighttime version. I think I actually like the nighttime version more than the daytime version because like you can see the foils pop more in the sky. Um, and again, this was when I was in New York and I don't know why I bothered to do a habit tracker. I do really like how I did the Monday to Sunday icons. Also, I don't think I planned this day to day. Um, if I recall, I left a lot of empty spaces and then after the stationary fest was over, I went back and filled in a lot of things. So yeah, and I used a lot of like New York and city related deco because I have no other chances to use it. So there's that. And then this was a catch up week after New York. Um, as you can see, I was kind of spiraling because I felt very out of routine. This is a fun veggies washi that I got from Jet Pens. For this week, I used the Little Sprouts washi from my shop, and I love how just simple this looks, but obviously still very cute, and I love the pops of green, so 
there is that. We also had my baby nephew's birthday party on this day. And then this is this current week. Um, this is a camping washi from Mindwave, and I got it from Wonder Pens a while back. And it is a thicker washi, so I just ripped it in half and kind of sandwiched the actual day in between. And I really like doing this because in the very early mornings, I'm obviously not awake, and I'm also not awake at the... I guess this also counts as morning, but what else can I say? Oh yes, I did some color coding. The blue is personal things, and then black is work things. And I also drew a circle around this medication tracker thing because I started a new medication on this day, so I thought this would be a nice way to indicate that. And that is basically it. Um, I really like all of my weekly spreads, and I think I said this in my previous July update as well, but I think I finally found my personal perfect balance between stickers and pen use. Does that make sense? Like I'm still using a good amount of stickers and washi tapes, but um, also not an overwhelming amount. And for that reason, I'm able to keep up with it a lot better. And then moving on to the daily pages. Wait, August, here, okay. Usually I start off with things that I wanna bring into August. So usually like good habits and then things that I want to leave in the previous month, so any bad habits, obviously. I really, really love this teal color. Perfect for summer, and it matches the ocean's washi really well. This was the day we had my birthday sale, which is probably our biggest event of the year. Um, so obviously I was really stressed, and that is why this spread looks different from my usual format. So I made a to-do list of priorities. This is a sticky note that I just stuck on. And then I also made a list of things that I want to do tomorrow. A little bit of journaling here. And then on the day of, I didn't want to write down a to-do list. I already have it over here. Um, and, and instead, I just did very casual check-ins throughout the day. And this way, I just wasn't too pressured to journal. But as you can see, I did end up finding some time to fill out this page, which is great. The next day, um, oh yeah, so this was when August 4th. This is when I thought of this um, format for my ADHD planner. I don't think there's anything notable to say here. And then this began my New York Chronicles. This is kind of funny. I, I literally forgot it was my birthday and I added this as an afterthought. I do want to talk a little bit about how I adopted this layout because as you can see, it is again very different from my usual format. So I really wanted to keep up with my daily prompts. So I successfully did that. Um, that was kind of my bare minimum. So under the today column, this is where I answered the daily prompt. It could be a sentence or two paragraphs, whatever. I just drew a line and then this is where my daily entry started and I just moved it to the larger column. So no to-do list, everything is just journaling. And if you either saw my Instagram reel or my TikTok, you would have seen that I had to retroactively plan a lot of this. So for any entries, yeah, you can see I preface with retroactive entry, retroactive entry, retroactive entry. So yeah, a lot of it I filled out after I came back from New York. And I had a lot of fun pacing in different uh, ephemeras and stickers that I collected. This was cut out from a Levin Bakery postcard, Le Mans. I was very happy about this. So the sweetest people, Nia, Shelley, Mary, Randy, Kimberly, Ashley, and Megan, they pulled together a snack parcel for me and they call themselves the unofficial Coffee Monsters co-fan club. And I was so tickled because I happened to have a sticker of seven emojis. And there are obviously seven people here. These are some Trader Joe's stickers. 
a little doodle of my kind of cafe setup. This was after the festival was over, but I was still in New York. So I basically just camped out at cafes and got some work done. So um, I just wrote it down on the sticky note and some more doodles of like food and places that I went to. This was the day I flew back to Vancouver. Um, so I have my plane ticket here. And then this was my first day, first full day back in Vancouver. And I had a lot of things to do. Um, I made this priorities list before I flew back. So I just pasted it in here instead of rewriting the to-do list. I also forgot to do my daily prompts. So I did it on Tuesday. What is a daily inconvenience you face? My brain, pretty darn annoying. I cannot recall exactly. I think I might have something personal underneath. Let me actually check. Okay, yes. I wrote down some very personal thoughts underneath and I obviously don't want to broadcast that. So um, I just paste it on this notepad thing. Some stranger somewhere still remembers you because you were kind to them when no one else was. And I think that is a very nice thing to keep in mind. Again, I was very out of routine these few days, so I wasn't back to my usual format. I'm a little bit spooked because I have flipped to this exact spread three times by chance. Um, my usual format. As you can see, it is again very different routine these few days, so anyways, um, let's see. Oh yes, I on Instagram, I saw this really nice infographic by my Easy Therapy and it was about overworking and I thought it was quite relatable so I copied a lot of the relevant things here uh, if you want to read it, you can pause and then recently, I have been really into carving my own stamps out of erasers I actually carved one for the festival and I carved another one which is an emoji with a sardine fish on the head and I stamped it in here uh, and then this is when this is when I started reading Tom Blake I accidentally used an ink pad that um, it wasn't chalk ink so it bled through to the other page so I covered it up with um, this sticky note this was from the quarter three subscription I love this chubby little emoji and I wrote I know you're trying love helen from thursday not sure if there's anything notable here not a, not the biggest fan of these threads i think i was still very stressed um as you can see i didn't even bother checking off anything from my to-do list ah this was a fun spread uh one of my customers monica she gifted me a set of taylor swift shimmery stickers like deco stickers and this one is from the lover album so it's like very purpley and pink and blue and i just used it throughout um, these two pages okay i really like this i doodled a paint palette and then i used little dot stickers of various colors as the quote-unquote paint and i think that looks really fun on this day just very impulsively at night i decided to go for a trail run which probably wasn't the best choice. It was pretty dark outside and I decided to run in the woods. Not my proudest decision, but I went and the reason why I wrote that was whack was because three birds flew into me. Like how does that even happen? I've never had that happen before and during this run, again, three birds crashed into me. So that was interesting. Okay, moving on. This was the day of my nephew's one-year-old birthday party. It took up most of the day, so I just did a little to-do list and then I journaled throughout the day. As you can see, I just, I really adapt my spreads to each circumstance. And this is what I love about the Hobonichi cousin. Several months prior, my nephew made this little doodle. And I think this is his first piece of quote-unquote art. So I kept it and I, taped it in here a very precious memory um what is something you didn't understand until you went through it yourself uh and this is a quite a personal uh, quite a personal answer so i wrote it underneath and this is a sticky note 
and I wrote none of your business. Okay. I kept the little washi sticker from the Mind Wave washi because I think it is very cute. I think I had a rough few days. S spoke too soon, negative two out of ten day. Tomorrow will be better. I know it will be. And then the next day, good evening, good night. Ah, uh, life. Uh, yes, this was another rough day. You know what? I am going to put down a no time to write sticker. Problem solved. Thursday, I used this super fun washi tape and I also stamped on the open book stamp. And then this is today. I doodled some fun little lavenders with, oh yeah, my new sailor ink pens. And I really like this. I should actually write down the heading. Whenever I do swatches, um, I always let it dry before I write the heading on top. And sometimes I just forget to write the heading. So anyways, I think that is, that is it for this planner update. Overall, I am pretty satisfied about the month of August. I mean, I, I started a new planner system to help manage my ADHD and it's been working really well. Almost done my pocket bullet journal. I was able to read a lot more, I finished two books, started two books, and I'm relatively happy with all of my um, Hobonichi Week spreads as well. The only thing that I'm unhappy about is uh, my unfortunate step streak that got broken. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a wonderful September ahead, lots of excitement in the air, especially with the Hobonichi launch happening. Um, I think it's actually August 31st for for us in the West. Or is it September 1st? Not too sure. But anyways, lots of excitement in the air. I hope you have a wonderful September and please take care. Bye!